Recently, I bumped into a very beautiful map of elevation and river basins on X by one of the most creative R artists, Research R Mora, and I decided to take up a challenge and check if I can do something similar. So in today's tutorial, we're going to go on a journey of creating a 3D river basin map. We'll be taking three steps on our journey. The first step will be to get the river data from the Hydrosheds database. The second one will be to get the basin data also from the Hydrosheds database and then clip the rivers using those basins. And the third step will be to get the digital elevation model data and then create a crisp 3D river basin map of Poland. Let's get started by first of all installing and then loading the packages that we need. I'm going to go ahead here and create a list of libraries that we want to install and then load and it's going to be called libs. The first one is the umbrella package called Tidyverse, from which we'll be using dplyr and tibble for data wrangling. The second one is the SF package, which we'll use for dealing with shapefiles. So in this tutorial, we'll be using uh, basins, rivers, but also national boundaries, and all of those are shapefiles. So SF package will help us load them and then modify them as we see fit. The third package is GISCOR. Because we are making here a national 3D river basin map, or to be more precise, the 3D river basin map of Poland, we will use Gisco R, which is a client package for getting national boundaries of any country in the world. The fourth library that we will be using is the elevator library, and we will use this package to load the digital elevation model data. Uh, because we will be working with a raster file, which is uh, this digital elevation model, uh, we will need a Terra package for that purpose. And then the final one for creating, of course, a 3D map is one and only Ray Shader. Uh, once we have this list, the second thing we need to do is check if it, uh, these libraries or these packages are already installed in our system. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take this libs list and then we're going to go and check the row names of installed packages. All right. Now, if uh, these packages are not installed, we need to install them. So here we're going to write an if else statement. So if any of these uh, installed libs equals false, in other words, if they are not uh, installed on our system, then what we're saying next is install packages. Uh, but we're going to install those uh, among the list of libs that are not at the same time among the installed uh, installed libs. So basically what we're saying here is install those that are not installed. And then the final step is to load these packages into R. This one is pretty straightforward. What we need to do is apply to this libs list a function library in R which is used for loading packages into R. One thing before we jump straight into coding is to turn off the spherical geometry using SF uh, underscore use S2 in order to avoid some of the errors that might happen if the vertices are not correct. Our next step is to fetch the national boundaries of Poland in the SF format. So I'm going to create an object called country underscore SF and then I'm going to use Gisco R and Gisco get countries function. So here I'm going to specify the ISO 2 code for Poland, it's PL. And then the resolution, I'm going to take the crispest possible resolution, which is one. So this will return a country SF object, which is going to be in the WGS84 coordinates wrapper system, which is the general global one. Uh, I want to do also one more thing, which is I want to take the, uh, the bounding box of Poland because it's going to help me later to load the rivers. So I don't uh, load all the European rivers, which is going to take them a lot of time. I just use the bounding box of Poland to load uh, the bounding box or the rivers that fall within this bounding box. So for that purpose, we'll be using STB box from the SF package. So this will, once applied to country SF, this is going to create these uh, boundaries. So let me actually show you what we get once we actually print this bounding box of Poland. So once we print that, we get then, of course, these are the uh, X min are the minimum longitude, Y min is the minimum latitude, uh, and then X max are ma maximum uh, longitude and Y max maximum latitude. So these four will then use to actually later on crop the rivers. Our next step is to download rivers from the Hydrofeds website. 
unzip it, and then load only the extent or polands into our R session. Now, if you're not sure where to find this link and this data set, I suggest that you take a look at my first tutorial that shows you how to make a 2D river map of any country or continent in the world. Now, back here, we're gonna use this link uh, to get the rivers for Europe. So first of all, I'm gonna declare this. This is our URL and I'm gonna wrap it with these uh, quotation marks to so turn it into text. The second thing what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start actually downloading this file. So download file, and then you need to specify three arguments here. The first one is URL, so we're gonna be using this URL. The second argument is the destination file name. We are simply gonna gra grab here the base name of this URL. So just to show you the base name of URL basically is this one. So hydro reverse underscore blah, 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 dot zip. So this is a zip file. And then the final thing is we want to download this as a binary mode. Our next step is to unzip that uh, zip file that we just loaded. So for that, we just use unzip from base R and we again pay, paste this base name of the URL. So I click here to execute, no errors thrown. Now, what I would like to show you is I'm going to list files that were uh, that are present now here in my working directory. So here we have actually three files, actually two files and a folder. This the first one that ends with PDF is simply a manual. The second one is the folder. So this is where the shape file is located. And then the third one is that zip uh, file. So what I'm actually interested in now here is understanding, OK, what is within this folder so i'm just gonna go ahead and use this list files again and for the path i'm gonna copy this folder name i'm gonna put it here and i'm then gonna actually i don't need to search for anything else here i can just go ahead and see what is inside of this folder okay so it says there are four so basically uh the shape files the projection file and all other company files with the shape file and we can see that number five is the shape file that we need Perfect. All right, so now that we have this, we can go ahead and also specify here um, the actual uh, file that, that we want to, you know, fetch. So I'm going to go ahead and name this file name, and then I'm going to apply this list files. And then for the pattern, I'm looking for a pattern that has dot uh, shp. So basically, this will then fetch the shape file. And finally, I'm going to go ahead here and say full names equals true. OK, let's check if we are actually getting what we need here. So let's uh, run this whole thing. OK, and then once we do this, let's then print this file name to see if we really got it. Yes, indeed. So we grabbed here the full pathway. So the road from here is easy. We will load now this shape file, but we will write a query that takes only the rivers for the bounding box of Poland so that it really makes your life easier and also this computation uh, much more also faster. Okay, so here is how we do it. First of all, I'm gonna create an object which is gonna be called BB, uh, bbox uh, wkt, which is basically well-known text. And then I'm gonna write a query here and the query will need to be, uh, of course, in the form of a string. So. Uh, the first thing is we're going to be fetching here a polygon. We're going to open here brackets, double brackets, and then what we need to get is the following. So first of all, uh, first of all, let's actually print. Let's print that uh, country B box so that we actually have the values and that we know what are the values that we need to insert. So I'm also going to expand this. OK, and then I'm going to print. All right, so we now have the values here. You can see them. So the first thing in this polygon that we need is this X min. So I'm going to just copy this. So X min. And then you don't put comma. You put the next value, which is going to be Y min. So it's this one. All right. And then you actually put a comma. Basically, what we're doing here, we'll be building here a bounding box based on these uh, values for the bounding box of Poland. So building a polygon that we will then pass to a query. And then this query will give us the reverse only for this polygon. OK, the next one is we need, again, the X minimum or the longitude minimum values. But this time we need Y max. OK, so it's this one. Then in the third one, we finally need X max. 
So it's this one. And then again, we need wax. So remember to just put here commas. Um, then the fourth one is again, X max or the maximum longitude. And then the third one, we are going now back again to the minimum latitude. So that's number four. Uh, and then we need actually one more, which is number five. And in this one, we will be taking minimum, again, so minimum longitude, and uh, also we'll be taking minimum latitude. So basically we end up with the same pair as we had at the beginning. You can now go ahead and load only the rivers that fit into the bounding box. So I'm gonna create here country rivers. And then I'm going to use ST read from the asset package. And we're going to load that file name, if you remember, that we created. So this links directly to the reverse shape file. And then the second thing, we will use the filter here. So it's called WKT underscore filter. And then here we're going to be passing this object, which is called BBOX WKT over here. So this is where magic happens. This is where we filter only those that we need. Now, if I go ahead and actually plot what we just opened, so um, I use again for that the base plot function, and then I plot only the geometry of this country reverse, you should be able to see in a rectangular form the reverse of Poland. Now, what we got here is, of course, the forest of rivers, and it's not really clear whether this really falls within Poland. So what we will do next is we will utilize that country SF object that we already have, and we also plot it as well. And we're going to plot it in a similar fashion. So again, plotting only its geometries, passing here country SF. And then one thing here is the color. We're going to choose, let's say, for example, red color, so that Poland really stands out or its national boundaries. And over here, we also put at equals true. So once you actually run this, you should be able to see something that looks like this with the Poland in red. And then you will see that it actually all these rivers or the fragment of this reverse fraction of this rivers falls within Poland and the rest is outside of Poland. That's because we took the bounding box, which also takes the surrounding countries. Our next step is to download the shapefile of river basins for Europe and the Middle East. And in case you're wondering where to get the link to the data, here it is. And one of the things that you will also notice is that it's again comes from the hydro chats. So we're using both the river and the river basins from the same place, which allows for consistency of our data. Now, uh, I did prepare one of the previous tutorials on mapping river basins, and I go in detail about uh, this uh, data source, but maybe we can do it once again. So here is what we did. So we went to the hydro basins a website. And then we scroll down until we got to the data download. So over here, you can download Hydro Basins for different uh, regions. So you can see there are standard and customized with lakes. We're just going to go with standard. So those just including rivers. And if you actually scroll down even further, you will notice uh, that for Europe and the Middle East, there is a specific section here. So you can click to expand it. And once you're there, you will notice that there are one. Uh, so from one to 12 levels of basins. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to go for the level four. So what these different mean is that uh, as the number of the level increases, so does the number also of river basins. So uh, for the demonstrated purposes, we're going to be taking four, which is not too complex. And uh, it's also going to be easier to download and also assign colors to it. So let's go ahead and declare this URL as URL. As you can see, I will wrap around this one quotation mark so that it's declared as a string. One thing you will also notice here, it's a zip file. So once we download, we will also need to unzip it. And to download, we will be using download.file from base R. Over here, we'll be uh, defining our URL as, of course, this object URL. Then again, destination file, it's going to be the base name of this URL. And then finally, the modes will be the binary mode. So then if I want to enlist the files in my working directory by writing this list files and running this, I will, you will notice that we now have actually four instead of three files. And the first one is the one that we just downloaded. So level four river business for Europe and the Middle East, and it's zipped. So I need to then unzip it. So I'm just going to go ahead and again use the, the space name of URL and then pass it to this unzip function. So then I'm just going to run. 
And then once again, once I run this list files, what you will see now that I have all these shape files that I need. So the next thing is we should actually uh, load into R this name number five, where it says .shp. So we can just copy this one and we can go back here. And then I'm going to call this simply this new object country Bayesian. And this time we're not going to be using query because this object is already very small. It's just a few megabytes. So we'll go ahead and use st read and then pass this one as, of course, a string. And once we do that, the very last thing is to crop it so that we take only river bases that fall within the national boundaries of Poland. So for that purpose, we'll be using here st intersection from the as a package and passing here country sf. Okay, and then if we print this newly created country basin object, you will of course notice it's an SF object. It has a bunch of things here. And it says here that it has 11 features. So there are 11 river basins, as for now, that fall within the boundaries of Poland. Later on, we will also double check if this is actually true, if there are actually rivers in all of them. And you will also learn that uh, actually there are 10 river basins using this level four that have a rivers. But for now, so this is how it looks like. Uh, fine, totally. So one thing actually that we will need from this one, going back to this, is this IBAS ID. So this is the Hydro Basin uh, Identification Unique Identifier. So what I would like to do next is just grab that one. And for that, we can use the plier, select, and just use this IBAS ID because that's the only clone that we need. We've got rivers and basins. Rivers we will need to now clip so they also fit into the basin. And in the process of clipping, we will also assign the basin ID to every river. And this is very beneficial for us because it's gonna help us also in the process of mapping, assign the color of the basin to every river to which it belongs. So I'm gonna create here an object called country river basin and We'll be using ST intersection once more for clipping. So we're going to be clipping country rivers and the overlay will be country basin. It's worth checking how many unique basins we now have as we clipped the rivers uh, with the country basins. And that's going to be pretty straightforward. So we just need to use unique here, then pass the name of this SF object and then grab this uh, high best ID and let me just just quickly uh, actually pull this up and then you can see actually here that the number of unique is seven eight nine ten so it's not anymore eleven it's ten because one of the basins apparently doesn't have any rivers one of the major components of this tutorial is of course deciding on the color palette because we will be assigning different colors to our basins and rivers and the easiest way to do that is simply take the color palette from hcl colors which is already embedded into base r so you don't need to call any additional package so in case you are wondering what are different palettes that this package or this feature offers I'm gonna leave the link to the website in the description box so you can check it out. But for now, we're gonna create an object called palette and I'm gonna call HCL colors and then define, first of all, the number of colors. Because we have 10 basins, the number of colors also need to be 10. And then the second one is the name of the palette itself. So I'll be using here a palette which is called dark stream. Now, the thing with HCL colors is that their colors are usually grouped together coming from the same family. Uh, this might lead to issues on the map itself because some colors would not be uh, possible to distinguish from other similar colors. So what I like to do here is simply use sample option from base R, which is gonna shuffle a bit the colors so that you don't end up with very similar colors next to each other. So you can also do this, but you can also skip it. Really totally depends on you. Now, there is also a case where you might have actually more than 10 basins. So what do you do in that case? Well, it's pretty easy. What you can do is the following. You can uh, you can go ahead and you can name it still palettes, for example, or you can maybe, it's better to choose something. Let's call it path. And then you can use color ramp palettes, again from base R. And then you can uh, put here this palettes, and then you can decide how many new colors you wanna create like this. So let's say, for example, you need 15 colors. No problem. Based on this 10, it will create five additional colors and then you're fine. 
All right, so in this tutorial, we don't have this issue. Um, I am actually pointing this out because HCL colors support up to 12 colors. So that's, I'm actually offering you this small hack. So uh, in the case you have more than 12 river basins, this will come in handy. We have the list of the palettes and their associated river basins for Poland, but we need to append this to the actual shape file of river basins and rivers so that we can then after that use in rendering the map. So in order to do that, we need to coerce this palette list into a data frame. And we're gonna do it in the following way. We're gonna be creating a pal object and then we're going to be using as data frame function, which is exactly used for coercing lists uh, or other objects into data frames. And then if you do this, you basically are not going to get two columns as you expect. So we would expect to get one which is going to be Hydra Basin ID and the other one which is going to be color hex value. But no, Hydra Basin ID, in this case, if you just run this, is going to be coerced into a row name. Now we want this row name to be a column so we can apply here a trick using a function from Tibble, and that function is called a row names to column. So basically this will coerce that row name into a column. And what we need to do here is simply rename this column. So I'm just going to use the name that exists in the shape file of a river basin so that later on I can actually join this one together with the shape file of river basins. Okay. And then the last thing, but very important, is we need to make sure that this column, high best ID, and the column under the same name in the shape file are of the same type so that they can be joined together. So for the one in the shape file with this name, we know it's in the numeric type, but for this one, we are not sure. So we need to make sure that it is. So we are just going to coerce it into numeric type. And for that, we're going to be using the plier a mutate. Mutate is used to either create new columns or update based on some condition. So we're just going to be updating this one by uh, coercing it to an integer using as numeric. If you print this PAL object, you will now notice that it has two columns just as we wanted. The first one is the identifier for the hydro basin, and the second one is the associated color for that river basin. So the next thing we need to do is having now this data frame we need to actually merge it together with our country river basin one. So that's then for every river, we have also the associated color of that basin. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create something which is called country uh, river basin pal. So basically just to indicate here that, yeah, now we have a palette. And then I'm going to use this country river basin that we previously created. I'm going to put it into a pipe. And then using the plier left join, I'm going to join this pal data frame to it. And the column that we'll be using to merge them is, of course, this high best underscore ID. The way we appended the color palette to the rivers, we will also now do with the basins because later on in Ray Shader, we will need to access this information directly from the basin shapefile in order to of course, color those basins. But before we do that, I first of all want to define here a Lambert projection, which I'll be using for Poland since it's a European country. If you're using a non-European country as an example, you can just skip this part and you don't need to transform in any of the further steps. So uh, having now this, what I want to do is first of all, create a new object, which is going to be called country basin pal. And then uh, the first thing I want to do here is simply transform to this new projection. So I'm going to be using here, uh, of course, passing here the country basin that we previously, so this is our basin shapefile. And then here I'm going to be using this CRS Lambert to do that. Okay, in the next step, we can finally join uh, to this one that PAL data frame so that we get also information on the color palette. And here again, I'll be using deep player, but this time I'm going to be using inner join. Why? Well, because I want to have the number of basins that exist in the colors that are already joined to the rivers. So currently I have here 11, but because one of the basins doesn't have any rivers, it should go down to 10. So this inner join will assure that. So I'm going to use here PAL, and then once more we will be joining here by this hydro, or actually high bass underscore ID. Okay, and then once we do that, uh, we should also make sure that this high best ID in this case is not a number, but it's a factor. 
because a ray shader later on is not going to accept this as a categorical measure unless we explicitly state as such. So I'm going to be using here mutates uh, from base R and uh, I'm going to be passing here this uh, IBES ID and forcing it into a factor using this option as factor. The second major component of creating river basin maps is of course determining the width of the river. So if we choose the same width for all the rivers, we end up with that forest of rivers that we saw at the beginning of the tutorial. So uh, I go for a strategy here of assigning the thickness of the river based on how big it is. And this is what we're going to also do here. But before we do that, we first need to see what are the uh, order levels of the rivers that we have for Poland. So for that purpose, we're going to inspect this uh, country river basin file that we just created. And then we're going to use uh, order flow. So this is the order level. And then we're just going to run this and see, okay, what are those orders that we have? So we have from three to eight, where three is the highest order and eight is the lowest order. So what we need to do next, so we have six values here. We need to assign them certain values, certain width. Okay. And for that purpose, we'll be creating a new object called country river width. So country river width is going to work. Uh, on the basis, of course, of this previously created country river basin pal. We're going to put it into a pipe here. And then we're going to be using here the plier mutate again. But this time we're going to be creating a width column. And this width column is going to be a numeric version of, uh, of course, this ord flow that we previously used. So, once we have this, the next thing is to assign the values based on that order. And for that purpose, what we can do is we can go ahead here and use uh, case when from dplyr. Okay, so case when is, if you're not familiar with that from SQL, case when allows you based on a certain condition, you can assign value to that variable. So case when, and then Inside of these brackets, what you need to do is you need to define for the width if it meets a certain condition to have a certain width. So, as we said before, we have from 3 to 8. So, if the width equals 3, then we can give it the highest one. So, let's say, for example, 14. I mean, now it sounds that it's pretty thick, but once we get to the mapping stage, it might not look that thick anymore. Okay, so that's the first one. Then we put comma here. And then we go all the way to uh, 8. So uh, we can just like copy and paste this as well. So the next one is 4. We would like this to be a bit thinner. So we can go, for example, for uh, 12. Then we have also after that, we have 5. We can go for 10. So you see what I do. Basically, I just decrease the thickness as the order uh, goes uh, down. So then we can go for 8 here. And then we also have seven. So seven can have, for example, well, here we can maybe go for a bit higher. So we can go for seven. And finally, eight can have the thickness of six. And then finally, for those that are missing, we simply can assign the value of zero. So basically, they're not going to be visible at all. And once we are done with this, we need to make sure that this is again still an SF object. So we're just going to coerce it to the SF object using SDS SF from the SF package. And the very last thing is making sure that the rivers and river basins are in the same coordinate structure system. So we're going to be using here SD transform and transforming into the Lambert projection. The base of our map is going to be a 3D terrain, and for that we need the digital elevation model. So we will call to rescue the elevator package. I'm going to create here elevation raster object, and then I'm going to call elevator, and from elevator I'm going to take get elev raster. So here, the first thing is we would like to get the data for the country uh, SF object, which in our case is the national boundaries of Poland. The second thing is the level of detail. I'm going to choose eight. The higher the level of detail, of course, the higher the resolution. But because Poland is a relatively uh, large country, we don't want to select a higher detail because that might eventually lead to our rendering scene uh, breaking up. 
So uh, the last thing is how we want to clip this uh, digital elevation model and we should clip by the borders of Poland. So that's why I put here the clip equals locations. So uh, I would like to work with the Terra Rust format. So I'm coercing it here. And then the very last thing also is the coordinates reference system. So here, because we're working with a European country, I am going to course this into the Lambert projection that we just defined. So uh, I'm going to go ahead here and just simply say Terra project and then project or reproject into CRS Lambert. And finally, in order to work with a ray shader, we need to turn this elevation raster into a matrix. So I'm going to create elevation matrix here and then from ray shader itself, I'm going to use the function raster to matrix and then I'm going to pass this elevation raster to it. We have all the ingredients and we are ready to write the code that will render the scene. First things first, let's define the heights denoted here by H, which is going to be the number of rows from our elevation raster. And then let's also define the width of our scene denoted by W here. And then that's going to be the number of columns again from the elevation raster. Now we can go ahead and start creating the scene using a ray shader. So first of all, we're going to write here the elevation matrix, put it into a pipe. And then we need to define the height shade here. So we're going to be using ray shader, height shade. So this is going to be our elevation, of course, and this one is going to be 3D, so to say. So in order to turn it into 3D, we first of all need to also define what would be the color. Because I want in this map uh, basins and rivers to dominate with their colors, I'm going to assign something which is a very light gray, almost white. So for that purpose, I'm going to be using color ramp palette and I'm going to be passing two very light colors to it. So the first one is going to be gray 90, so almost white. And the second one is going to be gray 60, so a bit darker gray. And they're here organized in such a fashion that these white colors are going to be associated with planes and these a bit darker gray uh, values are going to be associated with higher altitudes. So this is the first thing that we need to define. And of course, here you can also pass how many of these values you want. Let's say, for example, 256. That's not very important. Now we can go ahead and add our first overlay. Our first overlay is going to be the, uh, the basin. So for that purpose, we need to use from ray shader once more. We need to use add underscore overlay. And then within this one, we need to use another uh, function from ray shader. And this is called generate polygon overlay. So the reason why we are taking this function is that because in our case, basins are indeed polygons. So they are enclosed units and we cannot use anything else for this method. Within this function, we need to define several things. First of all, what is the geometry that we are going to use? So this is uh, the last created country basin path. So this one relates to uh, the basins and that's very important. The second thing that is very important is the extent. So what is going to encompass this, what we are creating? And here we can take simply this elevation raster that is going to uh, be our extent. And the final one is what is going to be the height map so that Ray Shader knows how to position these polygons. And because we want everything to be aligned, we can use elevation matrix to be our height map. And then come a number of options which are going to actually customize our map in accordance with the, the colors that we provided. So then for the line color, what we can choose, so this is going to be the edge of those basins. We can simply use that palette that we previously defined. And then for the argument, which is also called palette, so this is basically going to be what is the color of the filling of, of the interior of those basins. Again, we're going to be using palette. So that's the trick. And then the final one is what is going to be the identifier for all this. And this one is called data column fill. Here you need to pass in the form of the string the column that you will be using. And in our case, it's simply high best ID. We should also decide on the transparency of our river basin uh, layer, keeping in mind that we will also have rivers. I would like 
these river basin polygons to be a bit more transparent uh, than the river layers. And essentially, I would like rivers to have no transparency at all, so that they be clearly, clearly visible. So this transparency is managed using alpha layer. And here I'm going to put something which is like, for example, 0.6, so that rivers are actually a bit more visible than river basins. And speaking of rivers, our next step will be to add overlay from Ray Shader. And then again calling a Ray Shader, but this time compared to the last one where we used Generate Polygon Overlay, we'll be using Generate Line Overlay because rivers are obviously line shapes. But the arguments that we'll be using are pretty much similar. So the first one is, of course, the geometry field. And for the geometry field, we, of course, I'm going to be using this country river width that we previously created. Then the second thing, also very important, like in the previous one, is extent. Again, for the extent, we can simply use elevation or raster. And then the third one is the height map. So for the height map, we'll be using, again, elevation matrix. So, so far, so good. Now comes the fourth argument, which is a bit different from the add polygon overlay, in that sense that it's called, uh, not called palette, but it's called color. But it means the same, basically the same thing. So here we need to assign the color to our rivers, and that's pretty easy. What we can simply do is take this country river width, and then take from this one that palette column that we already assigned to each of the rivers. So Ray Shader will then know, oh, okay, the color of the river is according to the palette for each of those rivers. So that's great. We can also decide how are we gonna, of course, uh, manipulate the width of the rivers. And this one is called line width. Luckily for us, we've defined this in the previous step. So what we can do here is we're just gonna pass here that width column that we already have in the country river width object. And then the final part is where does this column width come from? So data column width is the name of this one. And then again, in the form of the string, we simply need to pass here the name of this column. And then the last step, as we did also in the previous one, is simply let's define the alpha layer. So how transparent this is going to be. And as I said before, this is not going to be transparent at all. So we really want to see the rivers in our map. So that's why I'm assigning here the alpha layer of one. Okay, the final step here is to plot the scene. And for that purpose, we'll be using plots 3D. Within this one, we need to specify several things. The first one is the height map. Again, we'll be using elevation matrix for that. The second one is how high the spikes are going to be. And this one is defined by Z scale. Here, the lower the value you take, the higher it is, the more pronounced the terrain is going to be, so more rugged it's going to be. And since Poland is has more or less the plains except for the you know the south, south part of the country, I'm going to take here a bit lower value of 10, but you're working with very rugged terrain countries with a lot of mountains, then perhaps you should increase this so it's not too rugged, all right? The second thing we're going to do here is we're going to turn off the uh, backgrounds, the surface. So we don't want the surface to be rendered. That's why it's going to be false here. Then here, because I don't want these very strong, noisy shadows in the background, I'm also going to turn off the shadow. So shadow is going to be equal to false as well. And uh, what else could I do here? Well, I can also decide on the window size. I think that could be uh, nice. And what I would like to do here, I can grab actually those values for width and height, but they are a bit too big. So I would need to kind of uh, uh, decrease them. So I can, for example, divide them by five, or you can do even a higher number. Okay, and the last few steps are, we can decide on the zoom. Here, I might go for like some kind of a middle value. So not too much zoom in, not too much zoom, uh, zoom out. Um, we can also decide on the angle of your scene. So I'm going to take, let's, let's say, 85 degrees. So that's almost a normal degree. Uh, and then the final one is how much your scene is going to be tilted. So I'm taking this zero. So it means it's not going to be tilted. So if you run now the whole code, uh, your scene is gonna uh, render, it's gonna show up, and you should be able to see the scene that looks something like this. 
not perfect because we don't see the entirety of Poland, but do not despair because there is a way to fix that. So in Ray Shader, there is a command which is called a render camera, and this one can uh, this one allows us to zoom in or zoom out, even change the degree or the tiltedness of our scene. And this is what we're gonna do. So the first thing I want to do here, I'm going to increase the angle even more, let's say 89 um, percent or 89, sorry, degrees. Then the second thing is zoom. I'm going to zoom actually out a bit more. So I'm going to take uh, something like this. And finally, I'm not going to change that up at all. Now, once you actually run this, you will see a new scene. And finally, you will be able to see the Poland in entirety with uh, all of its basins and reverse and uh, the reverse, the river colors corresponding to the color of the river basin. We're ready for the next step, which is rendering the object as a high quality image. And we are ready for our final step, which is rendering and saving the object as a high quality image. But before we do that, I want to show you how you can easily get an HDR file, which we can then use in our scene as our preferred source of light. We're getting our HDRI file from polyhaven.com and over here there's a bunch of very cool options for your uh, light and one of them that we'll be using is called Lean Popo Golf Course. So this one looks like a very rich light and it's perfect for our scene. If you click here down below you can also see how this light reflects on objects so you can also then understand how it could potentially look in your scene. So uh, in order to download this one, we simply then navigate to the upper right corner and we click right and copy this download link. And we simply then paste the link here into our R session and we define it as an object U and wrap the quotation marks around it so that it's a string. The second thing is we again use then download file to download into our working directory. For the URL, we define this link U. For the destination file name, we uh, again define the base name of this U object. And then finally, for the mode, we use the binary mode. One of the HDR file into our working directory, we are ready to render the object, taking all these ingredients, putting it into our pot, and finally cooking this soup. The first thing that we need to do is call a ray shader here and we will call the render high quality function for rendering the object. The first thing we need to define within this function is the name of the file and the extension. So let's call it Poland's 3D River Basins dot PNG. The second thing we need to do is define some of the custom functions. So one of them is preview equals true, which means that you can follow what's going on as your object renders. The third one is lights. So usually people put here that light equals true, but we put light equals false because we just downloaded our HDR file, which we're going to be using as a source of light. So that's why we're disabling here this option. But we'll be using another option here, which is called environment underscore light. And over here, we need to pass that file that we downloaded. So that's easy. We're just going to use here base name and then of that link U uh, because we do anticipate that this file, of course, is downloaded into our working directory. The second thing is whether you want to rotate a bit those lights on your scene. So rotate the environment. What I would like to do, I would like to rotate. I would like it to put it to the zero degree so that it's somewhere the shadow uh, appears somewhere uh, below the object, so somewhere in the south. So that's why I put it here, rotate environment equals zero. Uh, and then there are some other options that you can also put. And one of them is, for example, the intensity of your light source. So here, uh, if you put values of one or higher, it's going to be super, super light. But remember that our polygon layer is already light because the transparency is high. So we don't want the light here to be that high. So it's called intensity underscore nth for environment. And what I would like here to do is take something a bit lower than one, let's say 0.85. You can, of course, play with this, uh, see what it works in your concrete uh, example. Uh, there are some other things and that I like to also disable. And that one is interactive option, which is uh, moving basically your object as it renders 
but I found it to be very fatal and sometimes crashing my uh, scenes after a long time of, of rendering. So I highly don't recommend in using interactive. That's why I'm always disabling it. Another thing very cool is that you can also utilize your multiple cores uh, in your PC. So I tend to then turn on this uh, parallel option. And then the final one is defining your width and height. So you can go here for, let's say, the width that we specified. You can also increase it. So you can mul multiply here. Um, and also for the height, another thing is if you're using width just as width and height as height, keep always mind of the ratio. Once the rendering of your object is complete, you will be finally able to see your 3D river basin map of Poland with a very colorful uh, river basins and also rivers, a river standing out a bit more. Uh, and also a muted background, which gives a very nice contrast. You will also be able to see the uh, elevation uh, in the map with those pumps uh, and also the lack of shadow noise, which uh, then puts also your focus on the map itself. Okay, this was a really long one, but it was totally worth it because we created such a crisp map of 3D river basins in Poland that I would like to now create even more. But I'm especially looking forward to your own projects and how you can take this tutorial and apply it to your own use cases. But if you would like to replicate today's analysis, I've prepared a link to the GitHub repo with the code in the description box below. Feel free to clone it, reuse it, modify it as you see fit. If you have any questions, comments, or just general feedback, feel free to reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on X and Instagram. If you're new to R and you seek to expand your data visualization and geospatial knowledge of R, I prepared a few cool tutorials for you, so do check them out. See you next time.